Feeling stuck with slow muscle recovery, brain fog, or stubborn wounds? Tired of waiting for results that take forever? Whoa, imagine a powerful peptide that's up to 10 times more effective at activating growth. Introducing IGF-1 DES, a potent shorter version of IGF-1 that naturally occurs in the body and boosts recovery, muscle growth, and brain health. It binds more readily to receptors, stimulating rapid repair and regeneration. Whether it's building muscle, sharpening the mind, or healing faster, IGF-1 DES accelerates the process, which is why many peptide researchers are looking into this compound. This isn't just about a peptide, it's a revolution to learn, connect, and unlock your body's true potential. Join me as we take a deep dive into IGF-1 DES and together we'll turn frustration into mastery and curiosity into breakthrough results. So before I begin, I must start off with a disclaimer that I'm not a doctor or a licensed medical professional. Any information on this channel is purely for educational and entertainment reasons. For any medical questions or concerns you may have, please seek out a licensed professional. By watching this video, you agree to the terms and let's get straight into this. So what is IGF-1 DES? IGF-1 DES is a shorter version of IGF-1 that's actually naturally found in the human brain and as well cow colostrum, but it's 10 times more potent than regular IGF-1. And because of its potency, it has great effects at helping build muscle, helping with wound healing, and helping with the brain, which is why many researchers are looking into this compound. How does IGF-1 DES works? Well, it works by binding onto IGF-1 receptors throughout the body, but it is 10 times more potent because it has less binding proteins, so it allows for a greater availability, overall being around 10 times more potent. And these receptors do many things throughout the body. When it comes to muscle focus, it actually helps stimulate satellite cells, which are important for muscle recovery and repair. Additionally, it increases protein synthesis and as well it prevents muscle breakdown. Additionally, IGF-1 DES helps the body with insulin sensitivity, allowing the body to better use carbohydrates and proteins for building muscle and as well burning fat. Additionally, this effect carries over to exercise, which allows the body to greatly use nutrients and oxygen better with working out. And when it comes to the brain, because this peptide's actually found in the brain, it helps stimulate neuron growth and increase synaptic function, overall leading to better brain recovery and a better brain health environment. And now I wanna briefly touch on IGF-1 DES versus IGF-1 LR3, because it took me some time to figure them out, but they're almost in a way opposites. IGF-1 DES is a short version, but potent version of IGF-1. It's around 10 times more potent than regular IGF-1, but has a very short half-life, anywhere up to about 20 to 30 minutes. Where IGF-1 LR3 is actually a much longer version of IGF-1, allowing it to stay in the body up to 120 times longer. It's not as potent as IGF-1 DES when it comes to short acting, but overall it is still potent because it lasts in the body for such a long time. So in short summary, IGF-1 DES is a much more potent version but shorter acting of IGF-1, where IGF-1 LR3 just lasts in the body for a much longer time. So what are the research benefits of IGF-1 DES? Will help support muscle recovery, help support muscle growth, helps aid in wound healing, helps with bone formation and bone regeneration. Additionally, helps enhance insulin sensitivity and better use of nutrients in the body. Additionally, has brain protective effects due to its ability to help with neuron growth. Now let's go into the cautions and counterindications, or you can say side effects, but from my research, the most common ones I've seen are water retention, joint pain, low blood sugar, and more on the rare side, I've seen abnormal growth because this will grow your body. And especially if there's a history of cancer or active cancer, it can grow that as well, which is a contraindication is having any kind of cancer or a history of cancer. In addition, I've seen liver toxicity and heart complications. As you can see, growing things can be great, but at the same time, not great. And when it comes to counterindications, history of cancer or active cancer 
or type 1 diabetes because this peptide changes the blood sugar levels and type 1 diabetes don't have control over that. So we can see with a more potent peptide, it comes more cautious and counterindications, but I believe the poison is in the dose. Now let's go into the dosing and cycling. And for my research, I've seen anywhere from 20 to 100 micrograms per dose. And when it comes to cycling, I've seen anywhere from four to six weeks long, more on the four week mark doing daily injections or daily doses with at least four weeks off between cycles. Personally, I like to be more on the conservative side and do smaller doses and smaller cycles, especially for more potent peptides. And from that experience, I've been able to use peptides without having side effects. Now let's go into other peptides I would combine with IGF-1 DES. First would be ipirelin with either modgrf or tesorelin as one creates growth hormones such as modgrf or tesorelin and then ipirelin releases it. I wouldn't do a more potent GHRP like GHRP2 or GHRP6 as I think that would be too much growth hormone and that have too many side effects. Next peptide would be PEG MGF as this peptide really focuses on muscle recovery and can be very beneficial for really hard workouts post-workout. Next peptide would be folostatin 314 or 344 as these compounds really help with muscle building and muscle growth. Next peptide would be BPC-157, TB500, GHKCU, or you can say the GLOW combo. All these peptides really just help with growth and recovery. So I can see if I really wanted to focus on recovery, these peptides can be amazing for that. And I added them together because they're very commonly being used together and they're often called the GLOW combo. And lastly would be some kind of GLP, especially if the main goal is maybe more on a cutting. So such as semi-glutide, tizer peptide, or retaturide can be an amazing combination for this. Now let's go to supplements I would add with IGF-1 DES. First would be creatine. It's amazing for building muscle, but also for brain health, which is the two primary reasons why I think researchers use IGF-1 DES. Next would be either collagen protein or bone broth protein. So I think that is the best protein for muscle recovery with the lowest amount of inflammation, and it's the most useful protein in my opinion. Next would be some kind of natural test booster just to aid in testosterone production, which can greatly enhance the growth hormone benefits. Next would be some kind of a natural water diuretic to help reduce any water retention that one might experience. And lastly would be NAD and glutathione. I just think those are all around amazing supplements and greatly support the body in multiple ways no matter what the goal is. Now let's go into lifestyle tools I would add to IGF-1 DES. First would be fasting with a animal-based diet. Fasting is really good for cleansing the body and making sure there's not too much growth because always growing is not a good thing. And then an animal-based diet, I believe to be one of the best ways of eating to pack on muscle, especially including raw foods like raw fruit, but also raw milk and raw dairy, and maybe some raw meat if you can handle that. But raw milk and raw dairy are so powerful for building muscle and healing the body. Next would be exercise, but really focusing on corrective training, as that's the only way I train. And I really believe that is the best way for building muscle and the same way being pain-free and having a great quality of life. Next lifestyle tool would be sauna, as it has all around mini growth hormone benefits, but at the same time, helps manage water retention as that can be a major thing when it comes to this peptide. And lastly would be a lymphatic massage, which again comes to help managing water retention and fluid retention, which is pretty common among things that become more anabolic. Your body tends just to hold more water, which at times can be a good thing, but at times cannot be a good thing. So we wanna manage that in the best way possible. So lymphatic massage is a great way to do that. Now let's go to the pros of IGF-1 DES. The first pro is that it's potent, as I hear a lot of times that peptides don't work or I feel nothing where I believe that IGF-1 DES, you will definitely feel and see something happening. Another pro is that at the time of making this video, I believe it's one of the best peptides and most powerful peptides for building muscle. Now let's go to the cons of IGF-1 DES. The first con is that it is very potent, which can have lots of side effects if dosed incorrectly or cycled incorrectly, which I've seen quite often with water retention, changes in blood sugar levels, all these different things. So. So it does require more experience and caution with using IGF-1 DS3, so it's not that beginner friendly. So what is my overall opinion of IGF-1 DES? So personally, I have not used that form. I have used IGF-1 LR3. I like that version better as it's more gentle and more long-term. I don't really have a reason to use IGF-1 DES as that's really potent and I'm not really into bodybuilding or trying to get as jacked as possible. 
However, though, for bodybuilders or extreme athletes or even someone who experiencing muscle wasting, I believe this can be a very potent peptide, especially used in small cycles and smaller doses, is especially when it comes to more potent peptides, I prefer shorter cycles, smaller doses, as I say often, poison is in the dose. But overall, it's very exciting to see more and more potent peptides entering the market. And I think as the field evolves, we'll see more and more peptides that are potent, but at the same time have fewer and fewer side effects. So it's really exciting to see how this field evolves. But overall, it's a very powerful peptide and I have more research to do about this. But anyways, if you like this video and you want more, you can either join my Peptide Academy while I'll be in there answering questions, has a ton of content, or check out my book, Peptides Made Simple on Amazon. I put a ton of work into it. So anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you have an amazing day and stick around for future videos.